The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are 9-1. and one. They've clinched first place. What's it like over there? They're 10 and 1. Let's get that straight. Sorry. 10 and 1. Can we start that again? The oh, no. Winnipeg Blue Bombers are 10 and 1. What's it like over there? <laughs> uh, hey, man, I've been asking around to everybody I know, and I grew up here. I saw the teams in the 80s. You know, I saw those teams, man, those, some of those dynastic teams and eras. I've asked everybody, have you ever seen a bomber team this dominant? And across the board, Rod, everybody says no. And I, I wonder. When you see like the three over 300 points, four, just barely over 100 above that fourth quarter stat of they've scored over 100 points in the fourth quarter and have given up, what is it, six points or something impossible like that? It's just this level of dominance, Rod, it's something to behold. And I'm not going to say, you know, whatever, whatever unfolds during the playoffs here and the Grey Cup, but, you know, you don't want to create any sort a jinx situation man but my god do they look good and what a wicked opportunity they have to repeat as great cup champs after the bizarreness of the missed covid season winning it the year previous to that and that brutal drought uh, for near 30 years before that they're just in a fantastic situation you know i never thought about this but it came up uh outside of manitoba it was the 16 and 2 edmonton eskimos who lost the west final in 89 to the saskatchewan rough riders you know what i'm saying um is there any chance that you Osh? Can lose. yeah is there any chance Osh would let that happen that's an interesting way to phrase it isn't it would a head coach <laughs> let that happen like sometimes i know bob cameron always spoke of the best team he ever played on was the, i believe it was the 1987 Bombers, and they went in, and I think that they got it handed to him by Toronto. And the bizarre thing in sports, we talk about it all the time, Rod, where it's not like a a hockey series, right, where it's best of seven, and you can have an off game or two and still come out alive on the other side of that series. It's a one-off, and say, you know, a couple turnovers, a couple of mistakes, and bam, all of a sudden you start feeling pressure and and panicky. and, uh, And when you're at home and you're in such a dominant way, the way the Bombers have been, this season and they got a home game and they're expected to roll over whoever happens to be the unfortunate individual team coming in there for that West final. If a couple things in that game go wrong early on, then you never know what can happen, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Does it like it? They're just looking awesome. And I, yeah, I, I, they're going to be ready to go. And it's not going to be on the head of Mike O'Shea. Should there be some impossible thing that unfolds and, and they don't go on to the great cup. Yeah, I think the reason I said Osh was for the reason of motivation and preparation. I think it's clear they have the best coaching you know, staff, right? You know yeah. what I mean? And one of the strengths, since the right out of the gate here with him, and the patience early on in this process with Wade Miller, Kyle Walters, and Mike O'Shea, I, the most fun I have, or what I enjoy the very most, Rod, in watching their level of success right now is because of how patient they were in the early stages where a bunch of fans – you know, wanted O'Shea gone and were complaining about this and that, but just sticking to it is what um, they did under uh, Miller and Walters and, and seeing the benefits of it now with the Canadian Mafia is is a bunch of fun. But the one of the strengths, I think, of what Mike O'Shea has brought to the table and has emphasizes right from the start is separating each week. And whatever you did last week, doesn't matter, win or lose, this is a new situation this week in the here and now. And similar to maybe what Bill Belichick has done in the Patriots during their heyday. That's kind of the same mentality he's brought where it just doesn't matter what's happened, what's coming, what's behind us. It is right now in the here and now. I think he's done a brilliant job with this group during his time here. You would be the guy. We got two minutes left here. You would be the guy to analyze the Bombers kicking situation because we got a lot of friends over there in Winnipeg and all I keep hearing is 10 and one, but the kicking is atrocious. How would you analyze it? Yeah. Well, whoever was going to come on the stage following Elvis, <laughs> Justin Medlock, was going to be in trouble, right? <laughs> there was going to be a bit of a dip. But I think now I, I, I was a little bit surprised at how patient, and I you can be patient with a specific position, this one kicking, when you're winning games, right? If they were losing a couple of those games and, and kickers played a role in that, I think you would, would have seen more of a mass exodus, more guys flown in, that sort of thing. I don't know what their plan is going forward here, but certainly with – Castillo being brought in now that they've got I, I, he's like the job will likely go to him at some point in time but I think that they've solved that but yeah they, it was a bit of a funk there maybe that was just for all the the goodwill that they had under the remarkable Justin Medlock they maybe they just kind of had some of that coming to him after 
every time that guy walked out in the field, you knew that three points were going up on the board. Uh, Don Solar is watching on YouTube. He says, hey, from Winnipeg. Nice to see Troy. Still miss him and rants with Jim Toth. Westy, I get it all the time. People are like, how's Westwood? How's Westwood? I said, he's doing great. Would I be right mm-hmm. when I say that? Absolutely. I work for a great company here in Winnipeg called Gust and Quan. Fantastic culture. Love uh, the whole team. Having a lot of fun, Rod. Really enjoying life. I know you are, and I'm proud of you. Way to go. Hey, and let's it's, let's it's, do this in the playoffs. What do you got? Yes, and it's just kind of strange seeing you around in, without palm trees. You had that stretch of however many weeks that was, for the love of goodness. Uh, it's been too long job. without. Get a S- job. Stay tuned. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Troy. Yeah. Take care, brother. The great Trey Westwood joining us from Winnipeg. He is, he's a good one. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.